we go round the mountain, singing our very own song. When we're on our way, we shout hooray with a rat a tat tat and a bing bang bong. Magic is what we like to do, and if it goes wrong, we cry boo hoo. But on a good day, we shout hooray with a rat a tat tat and a bing bang bong. I'm ready if you are, Doris. Everybody now. Tee-hee. Here we go round the mountain, singing our very own song. Yes, we're on our way, so shout hooray with a rat a tat tat and a bing bang bong. Oh, I do love a good old sing song under the lollipop tree, don't you, Morris? Yes, I do, Doris. Um, Doris, the lollipop tree doesn't seem to have many lollipops on it today. That's probably because you've eaten so many of them, you greedy thing. Well, I've only eaten, um, one, two, uh, three, four... Well, that's quite enough. Hey, Morris, mm -hmm. now we're here at the lollipop tree, why don't we say our spell for meeting Grandpa? Oh, yes. Ready? Grandpa Wizard, Wizard come, come and see Morris and Doris for the lollipop tree. Hello, hamsters. Hello, Grandpa. <laughs> How kind of you to call on me on my birthday. I didn't know it was your birthday. How old are you? I don't know, and I don't want to know. Don't you remember what happened last time we tried to find out my age? Grandpa's Special Spell. As everyone on Magic Mountain knows, I am a very old wizard. Morris and Doris are always asking me exactly how old I am, and I always reply in riddles. I'm as old as my eyes and a little bit older than my teeth, I told Morris one day. To tell the truth, I had completely forgotten how old I really was. But I did know that there was a very complicated spell for telling how old wizards are. If we all try very hard, we could make a spell to tell you how old I am, I told them. Oh, we'll, we'll try, try, we'll, we'll try. try. Well, first of all, I said, go and fetch my magic pot and my spell book. Now, let me see. What does it say here? One wizard's hair, one wizard's eyelash. Oh, dear, I think this spell is going to hurt. Be brave, Grandpa, said Doris, as she tugged at one of my grey hairs. It won't hurt much, said Morris. Look, one of your eyelashes has fallen onto your cloak. We put the hair and the eyelash into my magic pot, added 12 magic moonbeams, um, two dock leaves, a slice of rainbow, and a piece of cloud, just as it said in my book. Morris and Doris said the spell. Wind blow, wind rage, what is Grandpa Wizard's age? Smoke began to rise from the pot and started to form itself into a figure nine. Another figure nine appeared, and yet another was starting to form when there was a terrific flash. I looked around me and saw that Morris and Doris looked very, very old. Ninety-nine, at least. I looked very, very young, just like a baby. Goodness gracious, I cried. Quick, Doris, pick me up and let me look at my spell book. Doris bent to pick me up. Ooh, my poor old bones, she said. She carried me carefully over to the table and put me down on it. I crawled to my spell book and turned over the page. It said, stir very carefully with a magic wand. So that's why the spell went wrong, I exclaimed. We didn't stir the pot. Morris and Doris stirred away as fast as their tired old arms would let them. Flash! There was a loud bang, and there were Morris and Doris looking just as young as they usually do. And there I was, looking just as old as I usually do. But there was no sign of the smoke which had been making itself into numbers. Oh, dear, I thought to myself. 
I still don't know whether I'm 99 or 999 or what age I am. Well, I didn't like being old at all, said Morris. I don't think we should try that spell again. And from that day to this, we haven't. Doris, Doris, will you come and help me move this table? Oh, Morris, you're always rearranging the furniture. What are you up to this time? Don't you know? If I knew, I wouldn't ask. It's rhyme time! <gasps> oh, hooray! Seek and find. Find two tables, put them in place. Find things to put on them. Make it a race. One little teddy bear, two big boxes, three comfy cushions, four pairs of socks, five worn-out shoes and six magazines, seven shiny spoons and eight jelly beans, nine odd buttons, ten matchsticks. Anything missing? Well, find it quick. Grandpa, what are you doing? What am I doing? Why, ringing my bells. What a lovely sound they make. They remind me of my friends, the goats. Which goats? Listen to Nigel's story. The Billy Goats Gruff. One sunny spring. Three billy goats decided to leave the valleys and nibble the sweet grass in the high mountains. There was Grandfather Gruff, Father Gruff and Little Billy Goat Gruff. Little Billy Goat Gruff had a bell round his neck that went ting ting. Father William Gruff had a bell round his neck that went bing bang. And Great Big Grandfather Gruff had a bell round his neck that went ding dang dong. On the way to the mountains, they came to a narrow wooden bridge across a river. The billy goats didn't know that underneath the bridge lived a terrible troll with big teeth and sharp claws and burning red eyes. Little billy goat Gruff started across the bridge. His little feet went trippity trap, trippity trap, and the bell round his neck went ting ting. Ting, ting. Who's that trippity trapping over my bridge? Boomed the troll, jumping out of his den. It's only me, said little Billy Goat Gruff, though his little knees went nick knack knock. Mmm! Breakfast! Boomed the troll and opened his huge mouth. No, no, don't eat me. I'm far too small and thin cried little Billy Goat Gruff. If, if you wait a while, my father will come along. He's much fatter and t tastier. Hmm! All right, then, said the greedy troll, and he let the littlest Billy Goat go on his way. Along came Father Goat Gruff. As he crossed the wooden bridge, his big feet went clippity-clop, clippity-clop, and the bell round his neck went bing-bang, bing-bang. Who's that clippity-clopping over my bridge? roared the troll, jumping out of his den. It's only me, said Father Gruff, though his knees nick knack knocked Hmm, lunch! roared the troll, and he sharpened his long claws. No, no, don't eat me. I'm far too tough and chewy, cried Father Gruff. If you wait a while, my father will come along. He's much fatter and tastier. Well, all right then, said the greedy troll, and he let the middle-sized billy goat go on his way. Along came Grandfather Gruff. As he crossed the wooden bridge, his great big feet went clatter-bang, clatter-bang, 
and the bell round his neck went ding, dang, dong. Who's that clatter banging over my bridge? bellowed the troll, jumping out of his den. It's me, said Grandfather Gruff in his grim, gruff voice. What of it? Mm. Dinner, said the troll, and stood up on his back legs. That's what you think, said Grandfather Gruff in his grim, gruff voice. But I know better. And he put down his head with its great big horns, and he charged. Bam! He butted the troll with his great big horns. Up, up, up into the air flew the terrible troll. Down, down, down he fell into the river. Splash! And the three billy goats gruff continued on their journey into the mountains to nibble the sweet spring grass. Well, that's lucky, cos I've got my great big drum. Come on, Doris, let's sing Nick Knack Paddywhack. This old man, he played one, he played Nick Knack on my drum with a Nick Knack Paddywhack. Give a dog a bone, this old man came rolling home. Knick-knack on my shoe with a knick-knack paddywhack Give a dog a bone, this old man came rolling home This old man, he played three, he played knick-knack on my knee With a knick-knack paddywhack, give a dog a bone, this old man came rolling home Knick-knack on my door with a knick-knack paddywhack Give a dog a bone, this old man came rolling home This old man, he played five He played knick-knack on my hive With a knick-knack paddywhack Give a dog a bone, this old man came rolling home <laughs> I could count up to twenty. Well, with a song like that, you can't help counting. Shall we sing it again? No, Morris. It's time for another story. Oh, goody! What's it called? Fleetfoot's Canoe. Fleetfoot, the little Indian boy, always liked to play on his own. Why don't you make friends? his parents would say. But Fleetfoot's reply was always the same. I'm happy as I am. 
One day, Fleetfoot was walking along the banks of the big river when he saw a tree which had fallen half in and half out of the water. What a fine canoe it would make, thought Fleetfoot. I would love to sail all the way down the river to the sea. He took out his knife and started to carve away at one end of the tree. You'll never make a canoe all by yourself, said a voice. Fleetfoot looked up to see a boy of about his own age. But all he said was, I'm happy as I am. Please go away. When my canoe is finished, I'm going to sail down the river to the sea. But the other boy didn't go away. My name is Running Bear, he said, and you must be Fleetfoot. Everyone says that you like to be on your own, but please follow me just for a moment. Running Bear began to climb a tall, tall tree. Fleetfoot thought for a moment, then he too started to climb. From the very top of the tree, the two boys could see for miles around. Running Bear said, You see that boy down in the forest? He too would love to sail down the river to the sea. So would the boys playing on the shore, and the ones you can see on the other side of the river. See them there, learning to dive? Fleetfoot nodded. Running Bear went on. Look at the boys with their bows and arrows. Look at the boys who want to make new friends and the boys walking through the forest. I think they would like to sail down the river too. Fleetfoot looked down from the top of the tree at all the people in the forest and by the river. He could see some boys round a campfire. One of them was getting ready to go fishing. Fleetfoot and Running Bear climbed back down the tree. When they got to the bottom, Fleetfoot walked to the edge of the river and called at the top of his voice, Who will help me make a canoe? Oh. I will. I will. From all over the forest, boys came running. Fleetfoot and Running Bear showed them the fallen tree and they all set to work. By evening, the canoe was finished. Early next morning, Fleetfoot and Running Bear and all the other boys climbed into their new canoe and set off down the river. As the boys laughed and joked, Running Bear said to Fleetfoot, Do you like our canoe? And Fleetfoot smiled and said, I am happy as I am. you to be very quiet. I am being very quiet. Good. Why are we whispering? Because Stephen's going to sing. One little Indian boy making a canoe. Another came to help him and then there were two. Two little Indian boys climbing up a tree. They spied another one and then there were three. Three little Indian boys playing on the shore. They called another one and then there were four. Four little Indian boys learning how to dive. An older one taught them and then there were five. Five making arrows then from slender shining sticks. One came to lend a bow and then there were six. Six little Indian boys wishing for eleven. One only could they find and then there were seven. Seven little Indian boys marched along in state. One joined the growing line and then there were eight. Eight little Indian boys camping near the pine. One came with bait for fish and then there were nine. Nine little Indian boys growing to be men. Captured another brave and then there were ten. 
21, 22, 23, uh, 25. Wrong. Uh, 24 comes after 23. Oh, Doris, do you think I'll ever learn to count? Of course you will. It's easy when you know how. Listen to Nigel's story. Teddy learns to count. Once there was a bear who loved to eat honey. He kept his honey in jars, but he never knew how many jars he had because he couldn't count. He wished he could. He kept trying to count his honey jars, but he always got muddled up. One, three, five, four, no. One, four, two, five, three, Oh, dear, I shall never get it right. Then his friend Rabbit said, Teddy, why don't you sing this song? Then you'll be able to count. And Rabbit sang, One, two, three, four, five. Once I caught a fish alive. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Then I let it go again. Oh, yes, said Teddy, very pleased. He began to sing. One, five, three, two, four. Someone sat down on my paw. No! cried Rabbit. One, two, three, four, five. Once I caught a fish alive. Oh, said Teddy. He tried again. One, five, four, three, two. Oh, I nearly lost my shoe. No, no! cried Rabbit. One, two, three, four, five. I see, said Teddy. And he sang, One, four, two, five, three. Won't you come and have some tea? No, 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 cried Rabbit, hopping up and down. Oh, dear, Teddy, whatever is the matter with you? I don't know, said Teddy, sadly. I just never get it right and tears began to trickle down his face. Don't cry, Teddy. I'm sorry I shouted at you. Shall I count your honey jars for you? <laughs> yes, please, sobbed Teddy. One, two, three, four, five, said Rabbit. You've got five jars. <laughs> Thank you, sobbed Teddy. One, four, two. But still, Teddy got it wrong. <laughs> Wait a minute, said Rabbit. <laughs> Teddy, have you ever gone fishing? Have you ever caught a fish? No, I don't like fish very much. I like honey best. That's it, cried Rabbit. You need a song about honey. Rabbit thought for a minute. Then he sang, One, two, three, four, five. Honey bees are in the hive. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Honey bees fly off again. Oh, said Teddy. Try it, said Rabbit. So Teddy did. One, two, three, four, five. Honey bees are in the hive. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Honey bees fly off again. You did it! cried Rabbit. I did it! cried Teddy. I can count. And off he went, singing his song all the way. One, two, three, four, five. Honey bees are in the hive. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Honey bees fly off again. Morris, singing a song is a very easy way of learning to count. Yes. Are there any more counting songs? Of course there are. I know an easy one which helps you count to three. And guess who's going to sing it? Don't tell me. Stephen. Right. <laughs> Over in the 
meadow in the sand in the sun lived an old mother frog and her little froggy one. Croak, said the mother. I croak, said the one. So they croaked and they croaked in the sand in the sun. Over in the meadow in the stream so blue lived an old mother fish and her little fishies too. Swim, said the mother. We swim, said the two. So they swam and they swam in the stream so blue. Over in the meadow on a branch of the tree lived an old mother bird and her little birdies three. Sing, said the mother, we sing, said the three. So they sang and they sang on a branch of the tree. Over in the meadow in the sand in the sun lived an old mother frog and her little froggy one. Croak, said the mother. I croak, said the one. So they croaked and they croaked in the sand in the sun.